efficiency and you know testing things for yourself, not assuming that the manufacturer is correct. Um, the one I wish you would revisit more is uh, RFID. Now I know that does Kerry still have the RFID oh, tag in her arm? Dude, the RFID thing. Yeah. Why did you not? <laughs> no. I'm sorry. I, I'm not. You. It, it's, it's just it's not going to happen. Okay. I, I t well, discovered. Here's what happened. Here's here's what happened. I'm not sure how much of the story I'm allowed to tell, but I'll tell you what I know. <laughs> um, we were we were going to do RFID, and we, uh, on several levels, you know, how hackable, how reliable, how trackable, et cetera, et cetera. And we uh, one of our researchers called up Texas Instruments, and they arranged a conference call between, uh, I think, Tori and the head producer over there for the other team, Linda Wolkovich, and uh, one of the technicians at Texas Instruments. This was, they were supposed to have a conference call to talk about the technology on like Tuesday at 10 a.m. And Tuesday at 10 a.m., Linda and Tori get on the phone and they, uh, Texas Instruments comes on, <clears throat> along with Chief Legal Counsel for American Express, Visa, Discover. <laughs> and everybody else. I mean, and I got chills just as I described it. They, they were way, way outgunned. And they absolutely made it really clear to Discovery that they were not going to air this episode talking about how hackable this stuff was. And Discovery backed way down, being a large corporation who depends upon the revenue of the advertisers. Uh, and now it's on Discovery's radar. They won't let us go near it. So I'm sorry. No. We are, it's, it's just one of those things, but man, that was a really, your story still gets a little white when he describes that phone conversation. <laughs> well, you do have about 3,000 people in the room who aren't under such legal arrangements with producers, so. Well <laughs> done. Nice. Okay, well, um, hi. It's hi. Great, great to have you here. Thank you. Um, and I've been a fan since the, the, the first episode, so it's wonderful. Um, I, since you mentioned earlier about all the food um, tests that you were interested in doing and that Discovery wasn't interested, how do you feel about the fact that on the, I'm also a foodie besides Mythbusters, on the Food Network, they're actually starting something similar to a Mythbusters show starring Ted Allen. Yeah. And how do you feel about that? I love it. Really? Absolutely. I love it. I mean, uh, of course it's, it's, it's incumbent upon the, the other networks, uh, Food Network and, and True TV, to, to try and replicate the success of Mythbusters. Um, it's still one of the top rating shows on cable television right now when it airs new episodes. Um, you've got Smash Labs on Discovery Channel. You've got sports. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. You've, got, you've got sports science on ESPN, which is actually pretty good. You've got, um, uh, there's a time lapse show on Discovery that's all time-lapse photography. That's all absolutely off of what we've done. Um, we actually were, were, were prohibited from doing a finale of an episode recently because Discovery has a whole show based on this, which I can't tell you the idea because it's they're still in development, but um, tons of things that we're doing are being pulled out and, and put together as shows about figuring out the science behind something and taking a close look at it. And uh, as much as I love being at the top of the heap and Mythbusters still riding on its, the crest of this wave. Um, if there are more shows out there that lend people to do critical thinking and break something down and think about it like that, that's fantastic. I'd be happy to watch us lose to another show that did it better. Um, I know that we don't do it as well as we could every single time, although we try. Uh, and I know that a lot of the attempts out there are crappy as hell. Um, but. <laughs> The fact that other people are trying to replicate our success by making science shows is absolutely not a bad thing. And as a, a quick follow-up from a New York point of view as a possible uh, science uh, suggestion, I happen to be at home right now cu cutting up ceramic, t uh, unglazed ceramic tile to put in my oven to make a better pizza, better pizza. And uh, there's always, obviously, co commercial pizza stone. And I was wondering if you've ever thought about testing commercial stones versus, you know, this kind of, you know, unglazed, which is better, how to make a better oven, yeah. better, you know, better pizza, and in particular, a Neapolitan pizza from a New York kind of pizza, yeah. and getting a better crust. 
and this is a new